How's it going everyone, it's me Lone, and let's talk about the new Legendary Run season in Fallout 76. So this is something that a lot of people are getting behind because of all the rewards that are available, whether it's cosmetics, camp items, caps, script, etc. There's a bunch of stuff that's available, and I can see that people online are wondering, how do I ensure that I get all of the rewards? How do I ensure by the end of the 10 week season that I'm rank 100 and that I can claim all of the rewards as part of the legendary run? And the obvious answer is, well, you do your daily and weekly challenges and get as many score points as possible because your rank as part of the legendary run is determined by how many score you have accumulated in that season. And when you look at those challenges, they're fairly straightforward. You know, whether it's kill this many legendary enemies, complete this many events as part of a group, etc. However, what I want to cover in this video are the challenges that are tied to you gaining experience points. And specifically, those are the level up challenges, you know, level up once to gain this many score, and also the repeatable XP challenge where every time you get 10,000 experience points in the game, you get 100 score. The reason why I want to cover this in this video is because there's so many ways of boosting your experience in Fallout 76 that you can really maximize and utilize those methods to get as many score as possible, especially because of that repeatable challenge. By getting 100 score every time you get 10,000 experience, it might not even matter that sometimes you miss a daily challenge or two or a weekly challenge or two because you can catch up really fast fast using all of these XP boosts and leveraging that repeatable quest or a repeatable challenge I should say. So in this video I'm going to show you all the possible ways that you can boost your experience in the game and of course this is going to help you with the level up challenges as well because you need experience points to be able to level up. So if this is helpful for you please I would really appreciate the subscribe. We have gained 2,000 subscribers in the past month. It's been absolutely insane. I really appreciate the support. Also as well well, I want to give a huge shout out to the sources in the description below. There are two of them that helped me create this video and the script to, that's to the right of me right now, which I'll be referring to throughout this video to ensure I don't miss anything. But with all that out of the way, let's go through this experience point guide in Fallout 76. So we're at my camp in the game and very quickly I just want to show you the challenges that I was mentioning before which are tied to you gaining XP. So for every set of daily challenges this week there's been a level up challenge. So when you level up you get 500 score which is nice and then for the weekly challenges when you level up three times you get 1500 score. Keep in mind those two are not repeatable so you can't keep leveling up to get more score. So once you've completed them that's it. However what is repeatable is this one as I mentioned. So whenever you gain 10 10,000 experience points you get 100 score and you might think 10,000 is a lot but especially when you utilize all of the XP boosts that I mentioned in this video it's actually not that much you'll complete this all the time very quickly if you follow my steps and also if you go to the areas of the game that I mentioned later in the video so keep an eye out for that. If I make any mistakes by the way or if I miss anything just let me know in the comments below I'll happily address it in a pinned comment but I think I'm, I've been pretty comprehensive with this guide. So let's start off with special. There are two special attributes that can help you get more XP in the game. Those are charisma and intelligence and we're going to start with intelligence because it's probably the one that applies in, in you know in most situations and it's more important. So for every point of intelligence that your character has you get roughly plus two percentage points of XP. All right. So what you want to do is increase your intelligence as much as possible to get as much of those plus two percentage points for every point. Right. And obviously a way that you can do that is here increasing your intelligence to 15. Now if you don't want to do that don't worry there are other ways to increase your intelligence but this is an easy way to do that again especially if you haven't leveled up too much if you have some level up spare like I do you can switch around but I'm not going to do that because there's actually other ways to increase your intelligence way way quicker than increasing it to 15 here I'm just saying it's an option if you can do it especially if you are leveling up and you're low level um, but let's go back to here so I need to mention before we go on, with intelligence, there's actually a hard cap of 25, okay? So even if you have 
crazy unyielding armor, all of these intelligence boosts, you can't increase it beyond 25 to keep getting more experience points, right? There's a hard cap there. And as you can see, I'm about six away from that hard cap. There's a reason for that, and I'll mention why when I talk about mutations. But yes, I could go to 25 by increasing my intelligence by six if I wanted to. So speaking of mutations, mutations are a good way to increase your special stats um, across the board, but also certain ones as well. When you use the uh, mutation herd mentality, you can increase all of your special attributes by two, which of course includes intelligence. But that only applies when you're in a team. When you're not in a team, it actually decreases all of your special by two. So if you are playing in a team a lot, and that's way easier nowadays with the public team system, then I would suggest herd mentality. For me, because I don't play in a team all the time, I actually don't want to do herd mentality. Um, so that's why I'm happy for my intelligence to be a little bit lower because I play alone a fair bit. The next mutation, which is actually really good, is Egghead. So Egghead gives you plus six intelligence. The downside is it takes away three of your strength and three of your endurance. Because I'm a bloody build and endurance is tied to health, I don't like to do that. Um, there is a perk card you can equip to reduce the negative effects of that mutation, and I will mention that. But again, I don't like any decreases to my endurance, let alone my strength, because that's tied to carry rate as well. But if you really want to leverage this, yes, Egghead would increase your intelligence by plus six. And for me, at least, it would get me to the max of, or, or the cap of 25, which is nice. So, let's mention some of those perk cards. First of all, we'll talk about strange in numbers. With those mutations, and of course, any mutation, if you're in a team that has teammates that are mutated and you've equipped strange in numbers, the positive effects of your mutations will be 25% stronger, which is great. So when I mention egghead and it gives you plus six intelligence, you plus 25% of that, and then that's what your increase of intelligence is. And strange in numbers is great because it's only one in as part of charisma. So it's very, very easy to equip. It's also very easy to share as well if you're part of a team. So make sure someone is sharing strange in numbers if you are all mutated because it's going to increase um, the effect of them. But then, of course, there is Class Freak. You remember all the negative effects that I mentioned before? Well, Class Freak will help you make those mutations way more viable. So it reduces the negative effects of your mutations by 75% all the time. You don't have to be in a team. It's all the time with Class Freak. The reason why I don't have Class Freak is because I prefer the per cards and luck that I have equipped. I actually don't equip Super Duper. I equip... Where is it? Uh, serendipity, it's way better. <laughs> so I have um, Bloody Mess, Starch Jeans, and Serendipity. I just prefer those perk cards. I don't mind the negative effects that my mutations give me, especially because I don't have Herd Mentality, for instance, and Egghead. But if I wanted to increase my intelligence more and I wanted to replace, you know, Serendipity maybe for Class Freak, I could do that and I would have higher intelligence. So it's an option for you, especially if your luck is higher and you can equip it. Also as well, the reason why Class Freak is really good is because for mutations like Marsupial, which decrease your intelligence, Class Freak is going to help counteract that. And everyone has Marsupial, right? Because it's so fun to use. So if you want to ensure that your intelligence isn't decreased by four, Class Freak is a good one to have. And I can show you right now, like if I take off all of my unyielding armor, my intelligence is actually minus four. So if I equipped... Class Freak, that would be reduced by 75%. So, it's an option, okay? Now, let's talk about Charisma. So, Charisma helps you get experience points because every point of Charisma that you have, very roughly, from level like 4 to 5 Charisma, it's an extra 10%, but it's very convoluted. Roughly every point of Charisma, it gives you plus 5% of experience points whenever you complete a, an event in a group. So it's when you turn them in, so it, it doesn't apply like intelligence, like whenever you kill an enemy, you get more uh, experience with intelligence or in high, a higher intelligence. But with a higher charisma, you just get more experience when you turn in a quest. So it's good just to have, to be honest. And again, if you have unyielding armor like I do, um, nah, let, me, let me equip them again. Because it actually increases my, um, oh, where is it? uh charisma to plus 20 which is nice 
And again, only when you turn in stuff, but it's still good um, to have at least. Now, I believe Charisma has a hard cap of 25 as well. I haven't been able to determine that, but from what I can see from people that have tested it, I believe Charisma does have a hard cap of 25. So uh, keep that in mind. Now, of course, there are perk cards that can help you with Charisma. And the main one, if I go here, uh, da, 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 da. I'm going to go all the way here so you guys can see it on the screen, is Magnetic Personality. So, you get two Charisma for each teammate excluding yourself, which means if you have three teammates and two, two Charisma for each of them, you get plus six Charisma when you have mag Magnetic Personality attached, and of course you're in a team. So for me, at least, like, I actually might, might think about, I might think about equipping that. That's not bad. Because travel agent's fine. Oh, it's a tough one. I'll think about it. But yes, if you want to increase your charisma um, to increase the experience points you get for turning in group events and stuff, then magnetic, magnetic personality is a good perk card to have. And of course, herd mentality would increase your charisma as well. That mutation increases your all of your special attributes, both including intelligence and charisma. So it is a good mutation to have if you always play in a team, to be honest. And of course, the next thing that can increase all of your special attributes is unyielding armor, which is what I have. I, I'll, I'll remove it again just to show you. All of my special attributes are now really, really low. So, 8 luck, agility is only 15, intelligence is literally minus. Endurance isn't affected by unyielding armor, by the way, but the rest of them are. So, I want to make sure that I equip these. And also, as well, you need to be low enough of health to get the max benefit of unyielding armor. Essentially, you get up to plus three to all stats except endurance when you have low health so if your health isn't low enough you might get plus one to all or plus two to all but if you're low enough like i am right now i believe it's below 20 percent very roughly i could be wrong on that um and it just you know correct me in the comments below but especially if you are below 20 percent, i know it does activate you get plus three to all stats so now when you look at my stats, they're like this. So that's why my intelligence is at 19. That's why my charisma is at 20. And ex But endurance, of course, stays the same. So again, this is going to give you more experience points. So for you bloodied builds out there, that's another benefit of having all of your uh, apparel as unyielding armor pieces, which is awesome. So I've talked about all that. Let's move on to public teams. So public teams is a great addition because it really does help you get more experience in the game and I'll show you why. So, I'm just gonna make sure I'm still recording, I am. You can, when you create a public team, there are different categories of teams that you can create. So hunting gives you more XP for legendary kills, roleplay gives you more charisma, events give you more event XP, uh, casual gives you more luck, building gives you more intelligence, and exploration gives you more endurance. Now obviously in there, there are different buffs as part of these teams which are going to give you more experience, just depending on what you want to do. So when it comes to hunting, it's a base plus 25% experience for every time you kill a legendary enemy. Now look, for me, I don't think this is the best because how often are you killing legendary enemies? There's one category here that I'll mention which I think is the best, but we'll get to that in a second. Roleplay. So, when you're in the roleplay um, public team, you get plus one charisma. Um, and then I will mention bonded teams at the end, by the way, but you get plus one charisma. Now, this is going to help you whenever you turn in a quest, you're going to get more experience because of the bonus charisma. And then you have the events one where you just get, you know, an increase of, in, of event XP. And that is also plus 25% whenever you turn it in. So... If your charisma is high enough, then you go events because there's no point in increasing it in more, uh, more, you know, if you're beyond that 25 cap because that's just going to give you more XP when you do your events. However, the best one, in my opinion, especially if your intelligence isn't at that 25 cap yet, is the building one because this is going to give you plus one intelligence when you create this team. However, I'll mention bonded teams now. When your team is fully bonded, it increases 
the benefits of these buffs all around. So for the bonus XP one, for legendary kills, it becomes 100% for a fully bonded team. For roleplay with charisma, it becomes plus 4 charisma for a fully bonded team. For events, it becomes plus 100%. And for intelligence, it becomes plus 4. So that's a huge benefit that's a huge increase to experience because again each point of experience is plus two percent right roughly plus two percent so a plus four intelligence is another eight percent experience that you're getting in the game with a fully bonded team and it doesn't take much i'm actually going to create a team now and i'll show you you remember my intelligence was at 19 it's now at 20 so now i can potentially get another three intelligence when three more people join my team and they become fully bonded with me so i'm gonna hope throughout the course of this video people do join me and they be and i become fully bonded because that's gonna mean that my intelligence becomes 23 which is really really good and again that's gonna give you more experience because of it that's why i think the building um, team is the best because it gives you experience across the board. It's not just for legendary kills and it's not just for, you know, completing an event or turning an event like it is for the charisma one. So building, I highly recommend it. It's great for experience. So I'm going to highlight that. But now let's say someone did join my team. I reckon someone will join eventually and I'm part of a team. It's very easy now with public teams. What I can actually do as well is ensure that I have the inspirational perk card equipped. This is gonna give you plus 15% more experience when you're on a team, when the perk card is fully maxed out. Inspirational is such a great perk card. 15% more experience is a lot. It is very noticeable. And with this new score system and the repeatable quest, or the repeatable challenge, I should say, this is gonna add up very quickly for you. So I highly recommend when you get into the game, create that building public team and equip inspirational. Share it if you can as well, if you have a high enough charisma. But that's gonna give you 15% more experience which is great now let's go on to the next thing let's talk about the well rested bonus i'm going to go into my bed right now and sleep for about it's like anywhere from 20 to 40 seconds it depends sometimes but when you sleep in a bed in the game you get another plus five percent experience points across the board um, and you'll see it you'll be able to know there's a little where am i pointing there it's on that side of the screen. There's the little Void Boy image that pops up and it says that you're well rested. When it says that you're well rested, you know that the effect is active. And that plus 5% experience boost applies for two hours. So it's actually fairly decent. And how often do you go back to your camp, right? You can go back to your camp so easily, sleep again, and then it starts the two hour counter, even if you haven't completed it already. So I feel well rested. I'm going to get out of bed. And I'm going to check my effects menu now because it's going to say, well rested, XP plus 5%. And again, across the board. So when you're pairing that with all of your intelligence, when you're pairing that with inspirational, you can see how this starts to add up very, very quickly. And we're not done yet because there's, there's a lot more stuff that you can do. Events. There is an event called Path to Entitlement. Entitlement. Path to Enlightenment. Jesus, Johnny. Um, and that um, spawns, where is it? Here, at the Landview Lighthouse. Whenever that event pops up on the map, and you can serve a hop if you want to, but whenever it pops up, do it. Because by the end of it, when you touch the wise Mothman that spawns, you get another plus 5% bonus XP across the board for one hour. So, do I recommend like leveraging this a lot? No, because you have to wait for the event to spawn or you have to serve a hop to be able to get it. But when it is there, you might as well, right? It doesn't take long. You get plus 5% experience and it, you know, stacks with all the other experience that I mentioned before, all the other XP boosts, I should say, that I mentioned before. So the Wise Mothman Path to Enlightenment event is very, very good. Now let's talk about consumable items. This one is tricky. And it's finally <laughs> that I'm talking about consumable items because Feed the People is on and that gives you canned meat stew, which gives you plus five experience as well. Coincidence, right? Anyways, let's talk about consumable items. So there's a bunch of consumable items that you can take in the game, like food, drinks, bobbleheads, magazines, chems, etc. 
that can increase your experience, can increase your intelligence, and can increase your charisma. And of course, they're all going to increase your experience, as, you know, because of what I mentioned before. However, before we get into all of the items that I've, you know, found through re research and just through playing the game, you need to be, be keep in mind that you can't always stack these items. So it's very convoluted, and I hope I'm clear. I've written this out to make sure I get this right. But let's just cover this from top to bottom, and if I'm not clear enough, I will try and clarify it in the comments below. So, you typically cannot stack a specific bonus within the same category. So for instance, you cannot stack food consumables that boost XP. So let's say you had a cranberry cod cranberry cobbler that increases your experience by five and a canned meat stew that increases your experience by five you can't take both of them and then get plus 10 percent to your experience it doesn't work like that if you take one and then take another the latest one that you took is going to cancel out the first one so keep that in mind. Don't just consume all of your food and thinking it's going to give you so much more experience. It doesn't work like that. But on top of a food consumable that increases your XP, you can take a bobblehead that increases your XP and a magazine that increases your XP and a chem that increases, like Excel, that increases intelligence and charisma, which is therefore going to increase your XP. So they do stack in that way between those categories of food, drink, chems, magazines, and bobbleheads, they can stack even if they increase the same attribute, like XP or intelligence or charisma. So keep that in mind. However, there's a third thing. I told you I got convoluted. For food and drinks specifically, you can stack them if they aren't boosting the same attribute. So for instance, you could take food that increases your XP and then a different food um, piece of food, sorry, that increases your intelligence, and then a different piece of food that increases your charisma. They stack like that. Even though they're all food consumables, because they're not increasing the same stat, you can take all of them, right? You just can't take food consumables that increase the exact same stat like XP. However, chems, bubbleheads, and magazines do not operate like that. Only food and drinks do. All right, so keep that in mind. I hope that was clear because I'm not going to cover it again. I will in the comments if you are confused, but just keep in mind that's how the stacking generally operates. And again, these uh, consumables usually have a temporary effect. Like they're mostly like an hour long, roughly. Some of the chems are way shorter. They're like five minutes or two minutes or something. But just know that all of these consumables have a temporary effect. So utilize them and use them when you're about to kill a bunch of enemies and get a lot of experience. Like we're going to do in this video very soon. I've just realized that no one's joined my public team. Come on, everyone. How many are in this server? I hope someone joins my team eventually, otherwise I'm going to be very lonely. So let's talk about the specific boosts. So when it comes to XP, you have the Leader Bobblehead, Cranberry Relish, the Live and Love Number 8 Magazine, Cranberry Cobbler, Can Meat Stew, Tasty Squirrel Stew, and Cranberry Juice. Each of them increase experience by a certain amount. The best ones, I would say, are... Of course, the leader bubble, leader bubble head, because you can stack it with the others. But that one's hard to find, mind you. So it's not something that you can really rely upon a lot. Cranberry relish is a plus ten percent benefit. So if you do have the re recipe for it and you are able to get the ingredients, cranberry relish is a great one. I mentioned before canned meat stew. Let's see if the event is still on. That is actually a great one to do because you get five cram uh, sorry five canned meat stew every time you do feed the people, and they give you plus five percent experience. Also, cranberry cobbler is very easy to make. You just need to get uh, fresh cranberries, not the diseased ones, and wood, and you make cranberry cobbler, and it gives you plus five percent of, uh, of experience. And that's why when you look at uh, mine, uh, cranberry, I have thirty one. It's it's awesome, right? So. Um, I should I should also mention as well that right now um, herbivore is doubling the benefits of things like cranberry cobbler, so you can see it's bonus 10 XP. Um, but I'm not sure if that's meant to be the case, so just just keep that in mind. Um, but yes. I would say Cranberry Relish because it gives you the biggest boost and you can't stack food, so you want the biggest boost. But for the ones that are very easy, Cranberry Cobbler is very easy to make. It's very easy to find wood and those cranberries. I'll, I'll even show you where I find mine. 
Um, this is a higher level area, mind you, but Sunrise Field, when you kill the Milo Queen and then you look in the water there, there's a bunch of cranberries everywhere and you can make so many of them. And then equip Super Duper and you double your yield. Great. Or you do, uh, you know, um, what's, the, what's the event called? Event called Feed the People and you get uh, Can Meat Stew. So those are the ones that I would say are the best for straight experience boosts. Now, let's talk about intelligence boosts. So, you've got the intelligence bobblehead, of course. You've got brain bombs, broiled scorch beast brains, owlet nuggets, scorch beast mix stew, brain fungus soup, steeped aster tea, and steeped tater flower tea, uh, berry mentats, daddy-o mentats, and Excel. Now, XL is a chem, so it can stack with a, an intelligence bobblehead, and then a steeped aster tea because that's a drink, and then a food consumable. Um, the best uh, chem, I would say, is berry mentats because that actually increases your intelligence by five, which is pretty nice. And then in terms of food, it would probably be, obviously the steeped aster tea is a, is a drink with, with plus two uh, intelligence, and then I would say Brain Bombs or Broiled Scorch Beast Brain because it increases it by three. Um, and then you've got, you know, the, the cams and stuff that I mentioned before. So those are the, are the intelligence boosting items in the game. And then you've got charisma boosting items. Again, I don't think these are as important um, because charisma, it only affects your XP when you're turning in events. But for the sake of the video, you have corn pone, mothman egg om omelets, sweet rolls, alcohol generally gives you plus one charisma, mountain honey, XL also gives you charisma, day tripper, and great mentats. Great mentats give you five, so that's the best chem to take if you have it. And then sweet roll gives you three if you are able to craft it. Um, and then I think mountain honey is a drink i think so that would give you plus one charisma so those are all of the charisma boosts so i've done enough talking let's get to, the, to, to some action i'm going to try and server hop by the way to get people to join my damn team because i want to show you the the max effects of having mo more intelligence but we're going to get to an area or a couple of areas in the game where when you kill these enemies, you get so much experience, and I want to show you how fast you can get score with all of these XP boosts. So, we're going to get to that, and I'll see you in a sec. Alrighty, so we're back in the game. We're in a building team right now, and there are two players that I'm fully bonded with. So I get another plus two intelligence, as you can see here. So I'm now at 22 intelligence. And I have a few other things that are active. Um, inspirational is, of course, there. I have a Cranberry Cobbler active, well-rested. So look, I'm going to show you how much experience that I get now, and I'm not even maximizing it based on all the things that I mentioned before. This just shows you how much more experience that you can get, even with a few of these, of these little boosts which don't take much and just to show you where we're starting at um, we are starting at 490 so let's see how quick it, it takes to get to 10,000 and right now we are at uh, Harper's Ferry there's a bunch of ghouls and scorched here which you can kill other great areas are um, where is it it is West Tech obviously um, White Springs is obviously a cult classic when it comes to killing ghouls for XP. I actually have a guide in the description below linked that'll show you some great places to go and get XP. But I'm just here at Harper's Ferry because there are actually enemies here. They were cleared out at the other areas before. Um, but let's see. Let's see how fast I can get experience. So a level 68 Scorched Conqueror. 200 experience, roughly. So there's actually a lot more Scorched here than normal. Usually they're ghouls for me. But let's just kill these guys, right? Um, someone else there, someone else there, all there, lot, lot, lot of Scorch actually, they're actually giving me decent XP, and you can, you can see as well that I'm almost leveled up now, just because of, of the amount of XP that I'm getting, 200 for most of these, or 193 for most of these, if they're a little bit lower level, it's like 140 roughly like that. But the reason why I like Harper's Ferry is because there are so many enemies that spawn here. Up here, there should be more. Yeah, I can hear. Oh, see? Over there. Dead. 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 That's going to explode. That's fine. And remember, this is just one area. So when I show you the result, this is one single area of killing a bunch of enemies with just some XP boosts. Not even all of them. There's a few more up here. There's actually a turret there. Hello, turret. A few more in this building. 
Hey, hey, don't do that. Well, that was a legendary. I didn't realize. <laughs> All right. Any more? I want to try and exhaust this area just to show you how much experience that we've gotten in total. There you are. See? Told you. Told you I could find them. There's actually a few of them here. See? One more in there. I can see you. There we go. All right. Let's take a look at it. So, from all of the enemies that we found, it was 5,000. To me, that's great. And you are literally halfway there to getting a repeatable, um, completing a repeatable challenge, which is a hundred score. So just imagine if, if you sit there and you really want to do this, you can get tons of score, especially if you have like a weekend free, you have all of these um, XP boosts, you're in a team, all that stuff, and you're getting 5,000 for a single area, possibly that like, that's absurd. And then Again, you're not just doing one area. You say, all right, now I'm going to go to, I'm going to go to White Springs. Oh, look, it's someone else joined our team. So now I want to get more, more uh, experience and more intelligence. But yeah, you could go to, to White Springs. You could go to West Tech. You could go to, um, there's another great area. I'm going to go to, you know why I like going to Watoga? It's because there's a bunch of, actually, no, you know what? Let's go to Forward Station Delta for a bit of fun. So here, there's a, a few scorched and and um ghouls that i can kill wendigo oh is it even a legendary scorch beast a few more scorched this is another great area to be able to farm xp because they keep spawning especially if you can handle um a, a scorch beast so let's hope that th that lands and in the meantime we're just going to keep killing all these scorched and all these ghouls oh look at that leveled up so I get score from that and I'll kill that oh here look another scorch beast so let's kill this guy we're gonna get more experience that guy's gonna drop soon hopefully yeah here we go hello friend oh scary you're a very scary boy and now you're dead Oh, mutant's boxing glove. I will gladly take that. <laughs> um, more? Yep, yeah, more over here. Oh, you're finally landing. And no, 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 no! Don't go anywhere. Don't go anywhere. Dead. Any more? Oh, over here. There's a, there's a lot more. Yep. Yeah. I'll jump over. Uh, kill this dude. And there it is. So, if I go to the challenge. I have completed that repeatable challenge by going to two areas in the game. So, I hope that that shows you how effective this method can be. Oh, I'm about to die, so I should take it right away. Look at that. <laughs> I almost died. I wasn't even paying attention. Let's get to the conclusion. Alrighty, Way Sanders, that's all from me. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments below if there's anything that I missed or if there's anything I can clarify. And until next time, this has been the Lone Vault Wanderer. Please take care of yourselves and would you kindly keep fighting the good fight.